Do you remember when brain training games were a big, huge deal? <laughs> Pretty much when the DS came out and you had like Dr. Kawashima's stuff going on. And they were everywhere. So fast forward a decade and brain training games have kind of had their fad and faded away a bit. But thankfully, Professor Rubik's Brain Fitness came out this year. I picked it up on the PS4 sale recently and have spent the last few weeks going in, doing a little bit of it every day just to kind of see how it affects my brain. The answer is not very much, but as a game to whittle away a few minutes with every single day, Professor Rubik's Brain Fitness works not so badly. The game itself is a mishmash of different ideas. Firstly, you have daily training mode, and inside here you have 15 different mini games that all play on the Rubik's Cube theme. So it will be things like rotating the cube around so that you can match a certain uh, shape of a Rubik's Cube somewhere else. Or it could be rotating the Rubik's blocks so that they can be like a hole in the wall style setting. Some of it is then you get a white coloured block in amongst loads of colours and you need to understand where to slot it into um, an open space so that all of the blocks fit. Then there's another cool one where the blocks explode from a Rubik's Cube and you have to track where some of them land. Uh, and then it's like how many Rubik's Cubes are in the box and things like that. It's a nice representation of the theme. The Rubik's theme works really well throughout, actually. Strangely, no actual Rubik's Cube game in the game, though. I feel like that's a missed opportunity. <laughs> of these 15 different mini games, you can use three of them a day to complete your daily training. And then you can as many times as you want a day or over the course of several days. Um, go in for your assessment and then it will pick six mini games at random for you to then be tested on and then it will give you a braining score. It will test you on numbers and equations, it will test you on spatial awareness, it will teach you on letters uh, and it will give you kind of like an amalgamated score on all of that. I have to say my score changed daily depending on which mini games it gave me and that's because some of the mini games are more variable than others and others are not. So for example there's a, a mini game where you are given different words and two of the words are rearranged of the same letters um, and I, the name for what they're called I'm gonna say anagrams but the, it might not be that and the game is the name escapes me but um, it reuses the same words over and over and over again. So you just memorize which words match on the page and you don't actually think about how it is answered. The same happens for equations, for example, where you have to say it's more than or less than. The same happens for when you're twisting around certain uh, Rubik's cubes to match shapes. The same shapes come up time and time again. And what this game has in variety, it then loses in not having a variety of options under those varieties, if that makes sense. It's all very well having, having 15 mini games, but if you've only got 30 solutions for each and you're going to throw 10 at me every time, quite often you get repeats in the same round and you're thinking come on you've done the hard work you could have just spent an extra month making up different algorithmic versions of things and chuck it all in and that's the real kind of downside to what professor rubik's brain fitness is all about it gives all of this variety in the daily challenge mode and then undermines it with that similar kind of thing that repeats over again so as a result my score goes up or down depending on which mini game has the most diverse answers or not. <laughs> Outside of that, there's then like this separate other mode that's going on and never the two shall cross. So you've then got in these single player modes um, like an interesting twist on 2048 where it uses three sides of a Rubik's Cube so that when you kind of shift up, down, left and right and all of the blocks kind of move and crash into each other, you shift on two of them and then like the third one is kind of stuck. So, but they can kind of shift over onto other sides. So it's really interesting to try and get a, a 2048 on that mode and it kept you entertained. There's also a Rubik's Cube ripoff of Puyo Puyo Pop where you've got blocks of four coming down and you need to match them all up together. 
the problem with this Tetris style variant is that it's too easy and there's no like permutations or increase in speed that goes very quickly so it, it kind of you fizzle yourself out mentally before you kind of get gamed over. On the flip side Mr Cube presents a kind of pattern shape where you've got to rotate almost like a, a sliding puzzle of, of images. You've got to rotate the coloured Rubik's blocks into the centre to create the pattern that it wants you to make. Uh, and then you've got coloured gates, which is like a Rubik's Cube version of Minesweep. All of these four modes actually aren't too bad and offer a good little variation for anything that you've got that's um, going on as well. So I really like the fact that they all exist. And then you have like multiplayer variants of this as well um, with some extra bonuses there too. Outside of that, you also have the ability to uh, unlock extra trivia and things like that about the Rubik's Cube settings. Um, I really like the idea. It doesn't go into too much detail though. It just kind of gives you some photos and some facts. I'd have liked that to have seen that being expanded because I think there's a whole ton of lore that you could go into. I say lore, history of <laughs> Rubik's Cube. It's not as if he's like, oh, I came from the town of Rubik. You know what I mean? Uh, and then the last thing that I would say is just the way how you choose things in this game is slightly awkward. It gives you a radial dial and you have to smash where you want to go with the left analog stick and then press X to validate on the PS4 version. Um, and actually finding your, sometimes you know the answer, but finding the answer and hitting it sometimes actually is what the time is taken to downgrade your score over time. So yeah, um, I don't think it was the easiest implementation of how to choose your answer. So with Professor Rubik's Brain Fitness, I feel like it's giveth with one hand, taketh with the other. It's fine, it works. Um, I enjoy myself when I play it, but I only play it for five minutes at a time and then that's it done. And I haven't seen any increase in brain capacity for me at all. I'm still an Essex blonde deep inside. <laughs> a written review is over on higherplanegames.com. If you find these types of games interesting though, wait for it on a sale. I think actually some people will enjoy, uh, particularly the theming around this is really strong. So maybe a future sequel can expand on some of these options and really give diversity in the answers that you're provided with. And I think that would overall improve the experience of what's here because the fundamentals and the basis for something good is definitely present. Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higherplanenetwork. Your support makes all the difference, and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.